Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, so, Map Roulette, uh, who has used it? All right, I'd better ask who has not used it. Okay, there's still a fair amount. That's good for a live demo then. Let's do it. Uh, okay, here's a web browser. Um, go to maproulette.org. And there we are. So what it does, it shows you one thing that needs to be fixed in OSM right now. And in this case, we're working on, we're working on adding lane counts to OSM data. So lane counts, what that is, is uh, there's ways, and some of those ways represent actual ways in real life. Um, and those ways have numbers of traffic lanes. Uh, most of them probably have two lanes, but there's um, a lot of variation, and we want that variation represented in OSM. So that was not done first for many of the for many of the um, the ways because people don't didn't think it was high priority. Many people still don't think it's high priority, but we're still doing it. Um, so what you do is um, you have you have very few options. It's it's just map roulette. It's really simple. It's built to be simple. Um, and the the main view is is map view with with the thing that needs to be fixed outlined in uh, blue, overlaid in blue. Um, and then we have a little black, little box on the right there. Uh, that allows you to pull up some a brief help screen, uh, some quick statistics, and you can skip this if you don't want to work on it after all. You get the next one. I'll actually do that. Everything has keyboard shortcuts, so you can just press W, and it will show you a new thing that needs to be fixed. Um, it's a little slow because of the internet, but um, we're getting there. And then the other thing is you can edit it. So that's that's the way to fix it. You can edit it. In this case, we're only doing JOSM. The reason for that is that um, the, the web-based editors don't allow you to really load one single object, and those ways can be really long. So if you end up having a really long way, then you'll, uh, you'll, you'll try and download a huge area into ID or a potlatch, and that doesn't really work so well. So that's why we only support JOSM for this particular ch challenge. So we hit E, and then it will get that particular way from uh, JOSM. It will, won't actually show JOSM, but there it is. Um, and then, of course, we want some imagery because that's the only way to see what the heck, what's actually going on. So I'm loading Bing. Um, and then I'll zoom in, zoom in a little bit. And then we can see that there is, I, can, I can't actually see. Oh, if I look here, I can. So there will be three lanes here. Agreed? It's not quite aligned, but I'm not going to care about that. It's just about fi fixing this simple thing. So I'm going to pull up the tag editor and say lanes equals three. And then I say upload, and then I say um, adding lane count map roulette. And that's that. That's one thing fixed. And then I, so that's, that took me all about like a minute, perhaps. If I just had stopped talking, it would, would have taken me even less. Um, so then I'm back in, uh, in the browser, and, it's, and, it, and it asks me whether I fixed it. And then I say yes, or if I just got lazy or forgot, or um, then I can indicate that as well. Or I can indicate it's unfixable because I couldn't see, or there was something weird in the Im error imagery, or there was some other reason why it was unfixable. Those things actually get recorded into MapRoulette, and after a few of those unfixable tags, if, if two, or two or three people say it's unfixable, it won't show up again. So I'm going to say yes, it's fixed, so other users won't see it now. And it will get me on to the next thing. And if you're like, if you have a lot of time, you can do this for hours and fix all the things, all the 6802 poor laneless way that we still have. Um, right now, I'm going to stop because I, want, I, have, I have other things to do, um, like talk to you about what MapRoulette does, is. Um, so that's that's how simple it is. That's what MapRoulette is. And right now, we're doing this challenge, and I'm going to spend like 10 minutes to. Uh, talking about the previous challenges that we've done, and then I'm going to spend another 10 minutes talking about the next things that we're going to do, and how we could use your help doing them. So it all started with a license change. Uh, you remember, we don't want to talk about it anymore too much. It was really painful. Um, but it's done now, and uh, but it left a lot of stuff deleted. People didn't agree to the license change, and uh, the people who uh, did not agree to the license change and the new contributor terms had their stuff deleted from OSM because it's not compatible with the new license, so we can't combine those data, those uh, those uh, uh, data, uh, those uh, the data from those users uh, with, uh, with the new in the new data set. So those had to be deleted. It left a lot of um, 
deleted ways and ways that went were thrown back to a previous version. So the integrity of the road network was jeopardized. So what I did, what other people also did, but what I did is create a map of w uh, which ways were affected. In this way, this in this case, it was the redacted ways, so the ways that were thrown back through to a to a previous. Uh, ver version that, that represents uh, edits that are compatible with the new license, and also deleted ways that show which ways um, yeah, were deleted because of the license change. So there, was, um, there were huge uh, areas that had, some areas were really badly affected, and they had a lot of ways deleted, and we wanted a way to fix that problem, but it's not really obvious. You have to really zoom in and see um, where stuff is missing. And some, sometimes it's just a little, a little tiny stretch, but it's still going to be... Um, Impossible to route, for example, over that over that road if it's, if a tiny little piece is missing. So to direct the focus and the community um, at the challenge of repairing those license change damaged roads, I created MapRoulette. It wasn't called MapRoulette then; it was called Remapatron. That's right. <laughs> and this is what it, this is what it looked like back then. It's pretty similar. Um, so yeah, there were a little more options, um, but you so you see that also there the missing segment is, is indicated in, in, in blue. Uh, there was a little bit of discussion whether we could actually do that because this is this represents data that was not compatible with our current license. So can you really show that and can you show that to uh, to to indicate what needs to be repaired? Um, in the end we even that we could because it's not it's not directly related to what people are doing in the editor because it's only shown here on the map. So we went we went ahead and did that. Um, and this is how that went. It went actually pretty well, and it was surprising to me it went so fast. So we started late, um, what is eight? August, right? August. Late August, and then 5th of September, level, level one was done, which was the, the, all the uh, motorways and trunks, I think. Um, so that took only like a week for, uh, fixing those 2,000 things. And that was amazing. I was really glad about that. And uh, so were a lot of other people. So we went on to level two. Um, that contained all the other ways that were deleted. And that took another three weeks. Uh, the, the little jerk, jank, jerks that you see, like uh, the little spikes down, are like when the data was refreshed from the server and then uh, um, all, the, all, the, all the edits that were fixed in other ways were also pulled in uh, into the MapRoulette database. So that's why, that's why it's not really continuous. But you can see the trend. I mean, it's, it's going down very fast with, with hundreds of fixes per, per day. So. We were definitely under something, right? So we have a lot of latent mapping energy, or like people have a lot of energy to fix things, and they weren't doing it before um, because it was unclear what to fix. So just give us something to do, and if it makes sense, we'll do it. That was my thinking, and this was something that we could keep doing. I, I only built this to to do that single thing, but then I, I realized we can do more things with this. So the Portland conference was coming up. And um, I needed to think of something new fast. And the best thing I could come up with uh, back then, I don't even know if it was my idea, but that was what, it, that was what we ended up doing, is a Zorro Ways. Um, that ended up looking something like this. So Zorro Ways, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's kind of the, w the way that have very, sh very sharp angles that usually indicates that something was messed up with the geometry. Um, you, ways, ways don't usually have sharp angles like that, only in very, 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 very rare cases. So this is another good example of a, of a great map roulette challenge because it's very easily, very easy, easy to fix. Um, it's, it, you can detect it by running a script that detects angles, um, and um, and um, and it's and it's yeah, it's it's you, you need a human to fix it. Also, you can't automate it. So and still, you can see that the user interface doesn't really change all that much from what it from what it looked like uh, today. So I don't have the the Zorro stats anymore, but it was done in a matter of weeks. Um, and after that, the current name MapRoulette was adopted. I think at the actually at the Co Portland conference, someone registered that domain name. Was it you, Serge, or was it Ian? It was, uh, Mike, that was, uh, Alex. Alex. Okay. Well, thanks, Alex. Um, so the next challenge was kind of a big one: the connectivity errors. So that's basically this. Um, yeah, so this is not, this is not good. In real life, this is definitely not good, but even on a map, it's not good. Um, so when, you, when, you, when two roads are not connected, um, you, can, you, can't, you can't build a, build a uh, graph out of it, and it, there's no routing possible. So it's v the, 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 the tricky part with this is it's 
on the on the on the rendered map you, you can usually not see those errors because the roads will be almost connected um, and the thickness of the lines will make sure that they look connected on the on the on the rendered map but they're just not so it's still it's a big problem and there turned out to be like 70,000 of those uh, this is what that looked like the example is at the Google campus actually interestingly um, which is pretty well mapped don't you think but that's not what we're talking about here. So this looks similar, but the interesting thing is that kind of at, you can see at the bottom end that at 5,000 it kind of tapered off and it, we stopped doing a lot of stuff. And that, that, that turned out to be the, 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 the cause of that was that there was just a lot of false positives. So things that were, things, things that were, were detected as being connectivity errors, but were just, just for example, a lot of uh, footways that were running alongside um, um, normal ways and just stop and very close to an intersection. Um, but uh, that, those are not real connectivity errors because those, the, the, the sidewalk actually did stop. Or, yeah, so those, there's a lot of false positives in different, in different, uh, of different types and that turned out to be the, those 5,000 account for those, I think. I'm not 100% um, sure, but I'm pretty sure that was what most of those were. So we already have quite a, Quite a, lot, quite a lot of tools that in identify map errors. There's Keep Right, there's OSM Inspector, and MapRoulette is different, um, I guess, mainly for a couple of reasons, or actually it's like, I, I like list of three, but I couldn't think of three things. Um, so focus, right, focus. It breaks down a big problem into, into a small thing. It makes it, um, it, makes, it makes it into something that, see, that looks attainable, a goal that makes sense. Um, and provide a clear path to fixing that problem. I think that's the other key, key aspect of it. There's an edit button, button, and the edit button goes to Jossum, and you fix it, and you go back. You can, you can repeat that until you get tired or bored. That said, we're now running a lane, 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 lane counts challenge, and it's not going very fast. Um, there's a lot of reasons why that could be. I'm not quite sure um, what the real reason is, but I've, I have a few ideas, and I'm going to share them with you. Um, one reason is that there's a lot of things that are not fixable because of problems like this. Um, these are real uh, examples that I pulled from uh, from, Mapro from, uh, from uh, 10 minutes of MapRolet um, editing. So that one, the top left one is under construction, that bridge, and there's no real lanes visible yet. This is not even the, the this is not even the, be the best example that you could find, but there's just not, you can see, for that reason you can't see that how many lanes there are. The left, the left one, there's just no high resolution imagery, so that's definitely not fixable. Or, they're, or it's foggy, so you have, looked at, you have to look really hard to fix it, and that makes it also um, boring, and should not be boring or hard. It should be diff easy. So a lot of, the, a lot of tasks get skipped. Um, there might be something else, though. There might also be map roulette fatigue, um, because people liked it at first, but now they're asking for more. Um, so things that, I, things, that, things that folks ask me a lot is like, we want to choose where we, where we work. We don't want to just work in, across the entire US or the entire world. We want to have a choice of challenges. We wanna, can, we do, can we deploy our own? So yeah, like I said, yeah, real soon now. Um, and it's true because we are working on, and that's mainly Serge and I right now, um, on MapRoulette 2. That's not, I don't know if it's going to be called that. It's probably just going to be called MapRoulette, but it's got to be. Got, it's got to be different from what we have. Um, there's the address, um, and I want to talk a little bit about the remaining time I have uh, about the main f new features that we're going to have, and also share. Um, and that's going to be an interactive part. Like, what are good challenges, right? Um, and I'm sure you have ideas for that as well. So the main features is we're going to have a uh, an API for challenge creators, and Serge ran a workshop on that on Friday, and, um, and um, basically what that, will, what that will allow people to do is to come up with their own set of tasks, and then feed that into the, into the MapRoulette server, and, and that way maintain their own, uh, their own challenge. So you don't have to wait for us to come up with new ideas, you can actually implement your own ideas and feed them into MapRoulette. And that's gonna be, I think, the, most the single most powerful thing, and that's also the thing that hasn't been made yet. <laughs> um, most of the other stuff is, is quite far along. 
Um, so we're going to have multiple parallel challenges. You can, you'll be able to choose what you want to work on. And you, you just go to MapRoulette, and there will be some kind of interface element that will allow you to like choose between challenges. Um, to help you with choosing, there's going to be levels. Um, you can pick easy challenges, medium, and hard. So an easy challenge would be the zero ways would be easy. So that's just adding one no or moving one node and uploading. Uh, the connectivity is perhaps a medium challenge. Hard one, I'm not sure. A lane count is not really a hard one. Yeah, things that are things that have to do with relations. Um, so that will be hard. And you have to be really careful not to go out of the scope of what MapRoulette actually is meant for. It needs to it needs to remain something that that is about fixing. Relatively easy stuff, but within that range, you can think of problems that are easier and harder. Um, another important one, of course, that's been much requested is the ability to look for local challenges, to challenges that are relevant to a specific area only, or at least relevant to a specific area. So every challenge could define a bounding box or, or an area where they're relevant, what they're, whether where they're relevant for. Um, and users can use that to to uh, to discover challenges that are relevant for, to them to the area that we want to work 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 in. Um, and the last thing I could think of is um, is a tighter integration with OSM. So you, you you can authenticate against OSM with your OSM user account, and then you can the OSM OSM uh, architecture would be used to st to store your your preferences for MapRoulette um, and maybe also help us collect some uh, statistics and rankings and make it a little more interesting generally. So right now, all edit all, um, according to MapRoulette, every user is anonymous. Like we don't know which OSM user, even though you're logged into Jossum, of course, uh, but MapRoulette doesn't know about that. So that's the that's the OSM integration that we want. So we can we can collect some uh, some user statistics that are that are specific to MapRoulette users on the, on the MapRoulette side of things and not, not only on the OSIM API side of things. So we're pretty far along with, with uh, most of the code. I would say it's like 80% done. It's always hard to say, but yeah. Uh, Challenge API, on the other hand, is still to be done. I mean, we, ha we have two sprint, sprint days ahead. Um, we're going to work on it uh, there as well. Um, and like I said, it's still mostly Surge and I, or only Surge and I, but um, we'd love some more help. Um, the code is, well, it's a mix of um, Python and, of course, web, web technology, uh, CoffeeScript, right? HTML5. HTML, oh, it's H oh, HTML5. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the main task remaining is, um, yeah, the interface for selecting challenges on the user on the front end, um, the, uh, some, some enhancements in the challenge model that need to be implemented. Uh, logging, unit testing, that's pretty boring stuff, but also need, need to be done as, we, as the project grows a little bit. Um, and then uh, enter the interactive part. So this is like what kind of challenges would be great to have, right? Um, some ideas uh, that have been floating um, around are untagged ways. Um, although I'm not sure, yeah, there's various ways that those should be dealt with, I guess. Most of them might, some of them might need to be deleted or tagged somehow. Um, railway crossings, that's a US specific one. There's a lot of tiger crossing ways with railroads that are not actually a railroad crossing. Uh, POIs without addresses. Uh, I, got to, I, talk, I talked over lunch with someone about that. Uh, it was Clifford, yeah. So we're talking about um, how that could be done. I mean, you could have, um, you could do a, a search in the database for a POI without an address or without opening hours. And you could show that on the MapRoulette front end, but you could also show a link, for example, to the Google search for that object um, based on the name and, 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 and maybe the place. And uh, people could use that the Google search result to, to, to figure out what the openings are, opening hours are from the website of the museum, bar, uh, whatever you're working on. Um, intersections likely to have traffic signals. So if you have an intersection of two major roads and it's in an urban area, it's likely to have it's likely to be controlled by traffic signals. Um, intersecting areas, so basically just topology stuff that's not right. Um, link roads that don't match the roads on either side that they're linked that they are that they link to. So the the, the underscore link uh, ways basically. And well, anything you can think of really. Um, the 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 main requirements are that it's like easy easy relatively easy to fix. Um, it needs it can be fixed automatically. Of course, um, and the third thing was uh, that was a third thing. 
you can you can you can you can fill in the blanks, right? You know what a good map roulette challenge is. So, yeah, that's I mentioned that. You're not, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I, I'd love to hear your ideas e either now or um, on the map roulette website that I link to. The slides are going to be someplace somewhere. So yeah, let's hear it. You mean like feeding photos into MapRoulette? No, I'm not. Okay, the animal app is just an example. All right. Of an app. Uh, with, uh, your app is just fine. You can get a little bit of All right, yeah. So we basically, whenever you're near a problem, that you get alerted on your phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, I think we, we've, we've I, I remember someone, yeah, that, that's been, that's been um, floating around that idea. It's a good one, yeah. It's not for the next version probably, but it's, 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 it's a, it's a fun, it would be a fun future development, yeah. So, yeah. Sure. Question was: Can MapRoulet be used for for uh, for assessing the 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 or com the, the for, for conflation, basically, right? That's what you're saying. Um, uh, when in case of an import, sure. As long I think the key the key the key component is you have to ask a very specific question. You have to ask users. So, for example, um, is this is this POI the same as this one? Um, so if you, if you find two two with, this, with very similar names that are within uh, 100 meters from each other. And that would be a very good map route challenge. Um, you, could, you would show them both, and then the only thing would be like which one is right. Um, so the other thing about map roulette is because you get a random thing that's located somewhere on somewhere in in um, uh, in the U.S. or in the world. You uh, you can't expect the users to have local knowledge. So either you need to be able to derive the information from the aerial imagery, or you would need to uh, be able to look it up online without violating um, um, the OSM uh, license. So don't copy from other maps. Um, so yeah, that that would be the that would be um, as, as long as you can as long as you can uh, you can um, as, as long as that's satisfied. I think it, it would. There's I see no problem why we couldn't do that. Good one as well. Listen. The question is whether um, there's been any thought or work on integrating with uh, with um, with Hot and their tasking their tasking manager, yeah, right? I think more generally, like the, you know how like there's a tornado. And mm -hmm. the yeah, and and like yeah, and events and and um, and events around that. Um, not really, although it would. Yeah, no, there's. Um, I mean, it could really easily be be done. It's just not being done yet. So yeah, no, but it, it would be appropriate for sure. It's a good point. Yeah. Dawson? Yeah, real soon now. <laughs> release, the a question is for a release date. Um, um, I'm, I'm kind of careful because the time we're, we're able to spend on this is, uh, varies quite a bit. Uh, sometimes we have, a, we have a lot of time all of a sudden, and some, and, but most, most of the time there's just very little. Um, I would say, I would, I would hope this summer um, but I would, I would be hard pressed to be any more specific than that. And the more help we get, um, the better, and the more time we can muster for this. Yeah, Birmingham would be a good milestone. Yeah, that's the main state of the map conference the, uh, in September, by the way, for those not familiar, you should go.
Yes, not Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> Birmingham, UK. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, anything else? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank. <laughs> Thanks much.